on a mission trip. And uh, the Lord, uh, that first year, we were initially doing mission projects, uh, working with NAM church planners in the big cities of the U.S. And after the first year, God put on our heart, if we're going to be an Acts 1-8 Christian, we need to do it internationally. So after the first year, we started doing uh, international trips. And the last few years, we've, we've focused on really about four different cities, I mean, four, four different countries in the world. We've been in India for the last five years, working with the, uh, the uh, church there in Ukraine, where our friends, Zakli and Gia, is their home church. Zakli is the one that got me started over there. Zakli, it was all your fault. It got me going over there. And uh, <clears throat> worked with that church for five years. And uh, it's a large church around about 2,500, but we've seen over 700 people accept the Lord through that church in the last five years. And uh, every year we went over there, we would train leaders to plant churches. And uh, I'd say we probably averaged 50 to 60 people out of that church every year. So over 300 uh, people were trained to, to plant and start churches, in, in Indi not just in India, but all over that part of the world. But uh, we've been going to Turkey for uh, probably 12 or 13 years. Turkey is 99% Muslim, 76 uh, million people, and uh, so we have a different approach there. We work with our missionaries there in doing seed planting and uh, making friends and, and sharing Christ with them through, uh, through a friendship approach to sharing the gospel. And uh, we've been working in uh, Peru and uh, planting churches in Peru through a very strategic church in northern Peru in Pura. And then uh, the last few years, we've been working in Alaska, as you heard about. Uh, I think all told now, we probably have seen uh, probably averaging, I'm going to say, 100, 150 people going on our trips a year. So whatever that number is, 150 times 14 is the number. Over 1,000 people have gone with us on mission trips the last 14 years. We probably have trained over 1,000 people. And when we say train them, we're basically, uh, we do discipleship training. We help them to become disciples because that's what the Great Commission is, making disciples. It's not, we want to see them become to Christ, but we also want to see them grow up. So we, we try to, to disciple them and then uh, teach them as a disciple there to be a leader. And so uh, many of those people have become leaders who are planting churches and strengthening churches. And so uh, we've seen over 20,000 people making decisions for Christ in the last 14 years, and uh, over 100 churches, as I said, we planted. You know, God's blessed. You know, it's not what we've done. It's what God has done because it's not just Karen and I because wherever we've gone, we've, we've, we try to take teams uh, because you can do so much more when you have partners with you coming along. So that's really our field tonight as much as anything. Uh, at this banquet tonight is uh, challenging some of you to become leaders like these three folks who testified here tonight. They are leaders. They're leading teams. Ryan's going to lead a team to Turkey. Uh, Timbo's leading a team to Seattle. So we're not just taking trips, but we're trying to train leaders who will multiply. The, the Bible teaches spiritual multiplication, and that's what Jesus did. He multiplied his life through 12 men. And as they received the message from Christ, then they shared it with others. And eventually the gospel came to America as a result of those 12 disciples. So our vision is to evangelize, win people to Christ, but to make disciples who will become leaders and plant churches and strengthen churches and multiply leaders. That's great. Well, God has, has certainly blessed the efforts over these 14 years. Now, you're preaching to the choir tonight. Right. I mean, the, these are friends. How many of you have been on? How many of you been on a mission trip? Let me just look look at your hands. Okay, many of you. Great. Uh, so the it's a friendly audience. Now, but we want to move them to the next level. They've been on the trip. Now we want them to be leaders. There you go. I was going because to say I can't. You know, on the you're going to be passing out just a mo moment. This uh, scheduled card for 2016, brother Jimmy. There uh, we got in January India. Houston, Seattle in March, Hong Kong in May, and St. Louis and Kansas City in June, and Alaska in July, Peru in August, Zambia in August, Turkey in October, Seattle in October, and Houston in November. I can't lead all those, Brother Jimmy. So what I'm trying to do is to train leaders who can lead these projects and multiply, because that's really what the Bible teaches, spiritual multiplication, 
Paul discipled Timothy, Timothy discipled faith and men, and others also. 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. So it's spiritual multiplication. Well, and, and uh, because of that, I think all of us are like, well, where is it headed? What, what, is, what is the vision for the future? You've already reached a saturation point with what you, uh, uh, your own energy. It's a shame you're not more than one person. But uh, what, what, what is the vision of the future and where are you headed with SFP? Well, first of all, uh, I don't know what TCU won or not, but it was going to be in the last quarter that they were going to win. And they did win? They lost. Oh, they won. <laughs> I'll never forget, uh, we were in uh, Turkey, and Brian was my roommate, and TCU was playing Tech, and uh, Tech won that night, I believe. But uh, So tonight, thank you, TCU won tonight. Here's my point, though, is that uh, many of the sports games are won in the last quarter, the last two minutes. Right. And I just had a birthday this past month, uh, or in March, and so I feel like I'm in the, the last two minutes of my life. You know, the Lord willing, I don't know how much longer he's going to give me. Uh, I've been blessed with good genes. My father just passed in July. He was 93. My mother's here tonight. She's 92. So uh, God has given our family good genes and good health and uh, basically a healthy person. So, but the bottom line is none of us know how long we can live, whether it's one day, one month, or one year, or 10 years, whatever. But I, I feel like that uh, I'm in the last part of my life. You know, I've been in ministry over 40 years, but uh, I feel like it's coming down to the wire. And so the, the bottom line is this, I want to end well. I want to end well. I want to be uh, strategic. I want to make a difference. I want to make disciples. I want to uh, plant and strengthen churches and leaders around the world. And so uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is invest my life in training leaders who will multiply the Great Commission. And so uh, I, I'm really uh, trying to be, the, the, the three initials, SMP, stands for strategic. And I jokingly say that strategic means when it's 110 in Dallas, I'm going to Alaska when it's 55. But strategic to me means I'm going deeper and stronger to make an impact with the gospel. Strategic. Make a difference. So we just don't take trips, but we go back to some of the same places like India for five years, like Peru for seven or eight years, or like Turkey for 10 to 12 years that we've gone there. Going back to the same places so we can build relationships with the people there, go deeper and stronger in making disciples, and and a, so strategic is the first key word. The second word is mission, which is the Great Commission, making disciples of all nations. And then the last word of SMP is partners. We can't do it by ourselves. So tonight, this banquet, it's all about, it's about partnership. We need partners. We need people who will be prayer partners. We need people who will be a, a project partners going on these trips with us so that we can multiply and do so much more, have people working with children like Janie, why Brian's work with youth, music, and he's a techie guy for us. So we try to, you know, whatever gifts, pe talents people have is exactly what's needed where we go. So uh, amazingly enough, that as we've gone to these different places, God has brought partners with us. The church that uh, we just came back from in Hong Kong, you know, I'm already thinking about now uh, what kind of partners we're gonna need on that team. But we try to put together teams it will make it an impact with each place we go because we're going to go back and go back and go deeper and go stronger. We make disciples and train leaders who will multiply. And our vision is not only for this year, but uh, you see there are cities and countries listed below just for next year. And... These are places that I don't have scheduled, but there are other invitations that we have that we can't fulfill until God gives us the leaders. So uh, the way that I know that's going to be fulfilled is on the back side of this card is our prayer card. There's seven points there. And the first point we ask, we're asking tonight for you to make a commitment to do is to pray for us and with us for laborers. Matthew 9, 36 to 38 says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth the laborers into the harvest field. So God raises up the team members and the leaders that go with us to fulfill the Great Commission. 
So we want to make a difference. We want to make an impact. Life is short. We don't know how much time we have left, but we want it to count. We want to go out strong. Well, and that's where all of us can, can be, all of us can pray. All of us can share in one way or another, either through, through efforts, uh, through being trained for leadership, to do jobs that, that Danny can't do them all. Uh, needs requires every one of us, and which, by the way, is the way the Lord intended it. That's the way he created us. He, he, didn't, he didn't save us to take us to heaven or we'd already be there. So guess what? He, he saved us and we're still here. So what now? Well, God has a plan and purpose for us. And the truth is, the, the one prayer that Jesus mentioned seven times in his high priestly prayer in John 17 was that my disciples would be one. If the disciples are united together, that speaks of partnership. It speaks of concentration of effort. It, it speaks of a way for the world to know that God sent Jesus and they'll know that, uh, that I'm the Messiah by your unity and your love together. So we're all in this and we all have a part. There are ways on these, uh, in this uh, uh, material that you have and uh, Daddy, we just need to, each one of us need to ask, Lord, what do you want us to do? And then do what God prompts us to do. So thank you.